Hi, this is Macy Barron from Tech Republic. I'm with Rob Sprang, Director of Kentucky Telecare at the University of Kentucky's College of Medicine. Today, we are talking about technology and healthcare, but specifically telemental healthcare. Video conferencing tools are becoming a common mode of communication for physicians and patients separated by distance. At the University of Kentucky, however, they have created a program geared toward helping rural Kentuckians gain access to mental health care resources. Rob, would you mind providing an overview of the current uh, telepsychiatry program at UK and particularly um, the partnership with Big Sandy Healthcare? UK has been doing mental behavioral health telehealth visits since 1995 with the intent to extend the reach of our providers beyond the brick and mortar facilities, which are in Lexington. Especially for this service, the demand for providers far outstrips the supply. And while there is plenty of business for our providers, if they wish to simply do traditional encounters and not use telehealth, there's a pervasive belief among our providers that this is their obligation to meet the needs of patients locally as well as across the Commonwealth. The providers use telehealth to reach patients in community clinics, hospitals, public schools, prisons, jails, juvenile detention facilities, and even the patient's homes. The Big Sandy Project is one of the first to fully integrate the mental behavioral health care with medical care provided by the community primary care providers. PCPs refer their patients to psychiatrists and before they're seen via telehealth, a community-based mental health professional does a full battery of psychosocial testing. This accomplishes several things, including provides the psychiatrist with rich data regarding the patient's condition. It eliminates part of the psychiatrist's exam, which can shorten the visit. It allows primary care center to bill for that testing service and it shortens the number of visits with the psychiatrist so they can refer the patient back to the PCP for their long-term care. I think all the stakeholders have been really pleased with the project because the patients are able to get fully integrated medical and mental health care in their home primary care center. The psychiatrists are able to do what they're most competent, which is to diagnose complex mental health conditions develop a treatment plan, and refer the patient back to the primary care provider who carries out that treatment. One of the unique aspects of this project is the integration of the mid-level mental health professional in the primary care office who's able to do the psychosocial testing. The project has proven that a team of health professionals working at the top of their licensure can have a positive impact on patients in their home community. That's wonderful. And so with this partnership with Big Sandy and connecting with rural Kentuckians specifically, what is really the true mission? You talked about some of some of the outcomes of it, but what was the mission from the start of this partnership? The fundamental issue and mission of the program is to provide fully integrated medical and mental health care in a primary care office. Awesome. Well, could you explain some of the common obstacles that Kentucky, rural Kentuckians and Americans are facing when it comes to access to mental health care? It is simply a problem of numbers. We often ignore the mental behavioral health conditions facing patients in rural America because we just don't have the manpower to care for these patients. Everyone recognizes that we should have fully integrated medical and mental health care accessible to all Americans. But without an army of providers in rural America to deliver that care, the healthcare system can fail our citizens. Telehealth has the potential to have an impact, but telehealth only addresses the access problem. The bigger issue is one of capacity. Even with telehealth, providers can only substitute a patient in rural America for a patient that normally would have been seen in a traditional visit in urban America. We must concurrently address the provider capacity problem. There's a program called ECHO. Um, ECHO programs have the potential to use video conference technology to engage community primary care providers 
to become more competent and more confident with managing these patients with regular education and case conferences provided by experts in their field. ECHO has proven successful across the country, including Kentucky, for a wide range of clinical services. So what can other universities and, and community centers do to try to implement their own programs? Maybe it has to do with ECHO or, or maybe just their own uh, telemental health programs like the University of Kentucky has done. Yeah, well, that could become its own webinar series and an article <laughs> on its own. Um, my suggestion is that a healthcare facility should create a structure for its telehealth program, and it can report through the CIO, it can report through the chief medical officer, but just make sure that there is a clear organizational structure. And ideally, there should be a steering committee or an advisory group that should oversee the consideration of all new telehealth services. So try to create a documented, quantifiable model that will determine what projects will be considered for deployment and a scoring system to help prioritize those projects. Start small, consider low cost, high impact projects that can be more easily launched. Don't get caught up with the technology. Many new programs can be done with simple computers, tablets, and smartphones. Could you explain some of the success that you've seen with your program? You know, what, what evidence of that success has become evident? People vote with their feet. And so we have been doing this for over 20 years. And we've done over 150,000 telehealth encounters during that time. I think we've been pretty successful. Every visit, is potentially a patient that received care that normally would not have been able to access care. Better access to care can reduce the time to evaluation, diagnosis, and treatment. Reduced time to treatment can help improve the clinical outcomes for patients and possibly lessen the cost for care. So conceivably, every visit that we do is a success. Well, Rob, thank you so much for exploring that more and for your time. To learn more about how telemental health can be developed at various universities and other programs that are out there to try and help rural Americans, check out my coverage on Tech Republic.